Because the competition that it created, man. I mean, I think like all rivalries like that, it's the best time period. Even on YouTube, you look at some people's, you know, best times or best moments. It was there was someone pushing them or a rivalry or something really, you know, pushing you to be better. And uh, yeah. I, 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 that's what I loved about that time. Plus, dude, you know what? At that time, I was like kind of getting done with wrestling. You know, I was starting to think, ah, oh, this is getting kind of lame. I'm 14 now. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'll stop. I, you know, I stopped watching a little bit. And then it, all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It started getting so real that it was like, holy shit, this is really cool again. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't really understand. I don't think I understood wrestling until that stuff started happening. And then I was like, hey, this is actually pretty great. Like one of the, one of the only things I remember about wrestling before then was there was like this whole bit where this guy took a like a samurai sword and pretended to chop off another dude's uh, <laughs> package or whatever. It was and I was just like, what the hell is this? And then they started getting to, you know, this huge rivalry as well. But like initially it was just like, some dude stole someone else's girlfriend and now he's really pissed off at him, et cetera. So yeah, it's weird. Like you know what? And I hit the record button because this is we're talking about wrestling now, so my viewers will like that. But yeah. um. So what's up? We're here with Onision, and uh, we're just having a pretty uh, chill conversation. But um, yeah, dude, that was Val Venus. That was uh, Kai and Ty. I remember they had John Bobbitt just got his uh, dick chopped off, and like they brought him in to save Val Venus the next week. It was, dude, it was so over the top and crazy. Literally two years before this, if I walked around at school with a wrestling T-shirt on, you know, kids would be like, you know, you're a loser. You know, you suck. <laughs> you're a fag. Like they would say right. just shit like that to you. And then legitimately, like a few years later, those same kids, all the jocks, everybody was watching it. They were running around middle school, suck it. You know, the teachers didn't know what was going on. And yeah, that's, it was the, that's how I dealt with Twitter when Twitter first came out. I was like, Twitter's stupid. And then I wound up going on it. Probably should have stayed off, but oh well. <laughs> I'm, on my, I'm on my fifth Twitter account. So it's, you know, whatever. I had, I had 30,000 followers. It took two years. And then all of a sudden, you know, I said MTV hates white people. Like I made a joke. I was like. <laughs> I was like, well, I go, MTV, why do you hate white people or whatever? Which is totally the opposite of my former beliefs, which I used to really, you know, I, I used to say things like, oh, yeah, what has he got to be worried about? He's a white guy, you know? And I sort of been taking the opposite side recently, and I've noticed that the censorship in that area is crazy. And all I said was, why do you hate white people? And my my Twitter was gone. The next day it was, like, suspended. I couldn't get it back. I was... It's, you know, it's 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 a slippery slope because of the the whole uh, white supremacist scare thing. Basically, everybody is not one hundred percent on board with uh, depreciating their own race if they're white is automatically assumed to be a tiki torch carrier or something like that. I don't know. I think that's yeah. I think obviously that's what it was because then people were like, oh, you know, you're a racist shithead and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, nowhere. I'm like, I'm nowhere near that. I was like, I was I, I was just joking around with MTV. I think they're slanted. You know what I mean? I think. You know, those Tiki Torch people are fucking idiots, but, you know, <laughs> obviously, like, but, you know, I, I don't know. I was also felt under attack for no reason, but, um, I don't know. It used to be back in the day I felt like I could be like, fuck white people, like, you know, you know, what do they have to worry about? We need to worry about these other things. But now I feel like when I, I, I don't want to do that because now I feel like I'm under attack all the time for no reason. Like, when I'm like, oh, shit, I used to champion that, but now... I feel like I'm actually feeling the effects of that when I didn't do anything. So now I don't want to really speak up like that. Uh, best case scenario, you just uh, try not to view yourself or anyone else as a victim and just power through it. Because whenever someone starts doing the victim card, they're going to get hate. And that's something I learned like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like generally like if you uh, if you if you present yourself as a ah, fuck it, let's focus on something really, really positive or really, really productive, then, yeah. I mean, like, for instance, like, uh, say this this whole white issue. If uh, you focus on just a totally different issue or, hey, really glad that MTV is coming out with some really good music as a way and totally dodge the, the actual issue that, you know, is a little dramatic, then you're going to get zero feedback that's negative. You might not also get uh, any attention for it, though, but still... Now I just uh, don't I just don't swear or anything on there on Twitter. But I mean I'm under, it's funny because I'm actually under an attack right now. It's hilarious. Like this guy's created like nine accounts. Joe Cronin's a scumbag. Joe Cronin takes your money. Joe Cronin's gonna use your money. Uh, so, I, do you have you figured out what what type of person? Like I I'd, I'd like the veil to be lifted and just see who the hell that is because 
It makes me wonder about what kind of life they're living. Like, I just imagine like some uh, hoarder or something, and just surrounded by cats and and piles of magazines or something like that. We do that. Well, recently, one time it happened that these guys were like attacking me, and they were saying all this crazy shit. And I actually followed them and got into their Discord. I didn't give myself away, but then I got a little creepier, and I followed one of their little Google Hangouts, and then I saw the dude, and I didn't know who they were. And I saw the people and I was like, wow, they're 15. The kid was 15 and he looked and he did. He looked like a friggin' goblin, like you were just saying. Like, like, dude, he looked messed up. Like he was in a tiny room, just a mess. He was looking like a goblin. And I was like, oh, I felt way better about it. I was like, oh, whatever, make as many counts as you want, I guess. Yeah, I, I feel like we just assume, we give that we give people way too much credit yeah. when they, they drop that shit. And then we don't really get to see that. We just see them as a username and an avatar. And the coolest or lamest or whatever person could have that exact same username and avatar. So we just assume they're someone worth paying attention to. But no, I mean, a lot of times it's just just some idiot. I don't... Ah! Is this, this what, what you want, want huh? huh? Is this what you want to turtle meltdown? I don't always take my own advice, but yeah, sometimes I'm like, hey. Um, dude, if someone else is, has a problem, I'll be like, dude, you realize the guy you're flipping out about is probably like 11 or 12 or something? Because if I had the internet back, I mean, we did, but, you know, if I had this sort of social media back when I was 14 or 12, I, I would have been a, I might have been arrested. Like, I mean, like, I was, <laughs> dude, I, was... I, I, I had forums and, and the only thing I ever did was uh, go on power trips because I was always the administrator of every forum. That's yeah. the, that's the worst case I ever did, though. So you, you I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> harassing people, but I definitely would be egotistical and, and self-righteous as usual so well that's another thing too is like back then you could do that and you probably could have said all kinds of crazy shit like i tell my kids this now like my eight-year-old the other kids are younger but the eight-year-old i'm like dude you know if you ever are on the internet like don't write things because now it's like they could pull something 10 12 years ago that you may have just wrote as a joke but you were like dead on serious it oh seemed... yeah they did they did they did that to me yeah they pulled up they pulled up something that was like it was something about uh non-white people and I, I looked at it, I was like, dude, that's not even phrased right. I don't even talk like that. But it was like a shot from a forum. And I had a lot of moderators that were rebellious and shit. Yeah. So I, I have no idea how this quote came out. I don't even remember the quote. But it was something like like a certain race not being attractive or something like that. And I was just like, I, I, there's no way I would say that. And that, especially not in the way they said it. But uh, yeah, no, people... <laughs> People just go. Everything I've ever done has been thrown back in my face, like a uh, like uh, old old websites. Like me- I used to have a Metal Gear Solid fan site. Oh my god! I used to, I used to have a I used to have a number of message boards and so forth, and uh, they were all they were all basically just talking, like uh, talking about random shit. Um, I love but, that game, man. I'd play that all night long with my buddy. Oh yeah, and I'm 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 really trying to. I really want to get into just. Uh, uh, gaming in a messed up way. I'm yeah. really excited for that. I want to. I want to game in a and like a, you know, so and so has a giant head or so and so, you know, like whatever character is unkillable or whatever. I just I, I like gaming in <laughs> in in the way that's like you don't have to really accomplish anything. You just have yeah. to basically mess with the whole world and make it like as awkward for all the other characters who are trying to kill you or whatever. <laughs> just, I don't know. I I like being the. Uh, the trickster or whatever of, of video games. Like, for instance, uh, Cuphead. Yeah. Uh, we downloaded the uh, immortality and all that stuff. So he's just, he's supposed to jump in a pit and die, but we're just bouncing in the pit because you can't die. And then we'll jump behind the monsters and just watch them shoot at nobody because they aren't programmed to look behind them. Just stuff like that is just so amusing to me. I love messing with that world. Yeah, yeah, manipulation of the game. Like, in, like Grand Theft Auto on PC is kind of crazy. These guys who created all ch- created full channels who are like, I noticed because I have, you know, with the kids, it's like Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, they create all the characters, and they do weird stuff with them, and kids are watching them. They get, like, millions of subs because of just that basic alteration. And you're talking about a more advanced, but... I need to I need to, I need need to, to get into that because that is, like, one of the things that makes me happiest as far as things I do by myself. Uh, like, like, a long time ago, I was doing a, a Star Wars Jedi Academy, and I was... I spawned... I turned my own character into Boba Fett, so I'm just flying around, and I I had spawned characters in front of me, and I did a bunch of Rancors versus a bunch of Luke Skywalkers in a desert field where creatures would come up from the ground and eat eat shit. So it's like there'd be like 30 Luke Skywalkers fighting 30 Rancors, and a bunch of them would just randomly disappear because these giant worms eating them all. But eventually they would kill the worms. It's just ridiculous. I, I fucking love that shit. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, real quick before I move the, to the next. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
thing I got to ask you because I'm I'm big into it right now. I'll tell you which one I'm into, but PUBG or Fortnite? I want to play. I want to play Fortnite. I play plenty of PUBG, but I want to experience Fortnite. It's just I keep getting errors on my computer, and no other game gives me errors like this. But it just won't let me log in right now. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. Just but I, I don't really. I don't really want to take a side. I will yeah. say that Fortnite is way more imaginative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By by far. So. Yeah, PUBG is just kind of the, the thing about PUBG that's fun is the fact that it's so glitchy and just kind of that old. It's got that old vibe of a glitchy game that you like even because it's glitchy. That's why it's so freaking uh, fun. Like SOCOM for yeah. the PlayStation. Yeah. Yep. So SOCOM used to be hella glitchy, but it's whatever. So um, I, I spent way too much time playing that in high school. <laughs> oh yeah, I left, dude. I remember I left high school for Halo. I like, I used to be in video class and I would actually check out all the gear so I could leave early from school. I'd be like, I'm going to film something. The security guards would be like, Okay, here's, here's my pass from the TV teacher. And study was before that. I would skip study, and I would skip that and skip gym, and I would just go home. And eventually I failed. But, you know, <laughs> the whole year I was just going home and playing Halo. So I was yeah. obsessed, But you know, which was dumb. But um, I want to talk about uh, the, the – so the shit with – dude, the shit with Keemstar. Like, I've got a list of stuff here. And I know I recently saw one of your Vimeo videos. You were like, I'm trying to stay away from drama and be positive and shit. And we all are, but – you know what I mean? Like, he still criticizes you and still criticizes... He's scared of me. So if you're listening, Keemstar, you fucking scared. Um, but <laughs> but he still criticizes... No, I think, I think what Keemstar does is he looks at... He doesn't look at people as to who he likes or who he hates. He looks mm-hmm. at people and he asks himself, you know, what is public opinion and uh, how can I make people who are interested in this person click on the video? So right. I, don't think, I don't think any of it has anything to do with Keemstar. I think it, most of it has to do with just him wanting to... The uh, person who successfully markets himself, and he's done, you know, that very well. So, what do you think in other words, it? in in other words, he looks at a channel and he says, "Well, uh, what will the impact be if I talk about this person?" And then it goes from there. Well, as know. far as me, I don't even think like I wouldn't think he would ever cover me. I'm too small. There's no reason to cover me at all. But what I meant was like he's done work with like my former just co-host. just get involved with a horrible scandal and he'll be all over it. <laughs> well, that's sort of happened, but he's you know <laughs> I don't know like I like I run with um like my former co-host uh, you know worked with him on his podcast actually like for a while at first. Actually, they recently talked about you, which is weird because I planned to have you on weeks ago, and then last week they were talking about your military career, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "This is weird because I'm having him on." Okay. I'm so I'm so confused when people talk about my military career because what I've told about my military career is like so black and white. I just I just, I don't understand what there is to really say more about it, especially when you're a person who wasn't there, didn't actually see anything happen, and is just going off, you know. What, uh, well, I think they out there. they were compiling just everything you've ever said. I think breaking it down. I didn't really get to see the whole thing because I don't watch. It oh so my much. god, that sounds awesome! Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> let's, we'll just watch it and react to it. It'll be crazy. I don't know. Yeah. He, he had a funny disclaimer at the beginning of the video that was like, "This is not again," because it was showing the YouTube terms of services, and you know how YouTube's terms are just so bizarre now. And one of the things was like military status, and so the beginning of the video starts with them being like, "It's okay to talk about this. We're not gonna." You know, no hate or whatever, and it's just, I just thought that was funny the way it started. But uh, if they said no hate or whatever, didn't it just turn into hate after that? I imagine. I, yeah, <laughs> it did really. But you know, typically, if you need a disclaimer, like this is how my disclaimers used to go: "This is going to be offensive. Don't watch it if you're going to be offended." And that's yeah. how my disclaimers were because that's how it was. But if you're like, "Hey, this is no hate or anything," you're about to drop a load of hate. Like you yeah. wouldn't have to say that. <laughs> it's, just, it's like n- no offense, but no, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> like it's gonna be offensive. I knew it was gonna be. About? We got in a major battle. We're all right now, but like we got in some major shit. Which actually, part of it too stemmed from my buddy. Uh, I he for he, he, he'll kill me if I don't ask you. You you know Tom? Do you know who Tommy NC is? Probably. So he got he got in a fight with Leafy. He's like the autistic guy. I got in a, like Leafy crapped on him. And yeah yeah yeah. What about it? Oh yeah. So he was like, oh you know tell. Onision, why would he stiff me and everything? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I tried to get him on my show. I'm like, well, he probably just didn't answer you among the thousand of other emails. Tommy, and you pooped Tommy, on him or Tommy, something. Tommy and C is asking this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's been a listener of mine for five years, and so uh, yeah. Just tell him tell him to write my uh, business email. There you go, Tommy. All right, I'll talk to him. Well, I'm just... it's, my my business email is on like every YouTube channel I have. So you're you're gonna you should get something back unless I'm like, what the. F- like he I, said something. I look at an email, and I'm just like, "What are they talking about?" Then no. Well, but he, he said like you... the, the, the emails I typically ignore are like, "Hi, Onision, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm 17 years old," and and then I just delete it. 
So like, well, Tommy's. I, I mean, if he's... it's if it's not like a pay attention to it, if it's like a business or podcast or whatever. Well, his thing too probably, probably was like, something. "Come on, my podcast." That's probably all it was. So you're probably like, "What? Okay, yeah. whatever." I'm sure. like doing a million things. Uh, he said somebody like you, some about crap, like pooping on him or something, or doing a video with shit or something. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I never saw that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it later. I don't typically poop in my videos. Not yet. Yeah, I'd like to. Also, you know, I never know that you're getting close with those. Some of those ones on uh, Patreon. Uh, by the way, check out Onision's <laughs> Patreon. It's fucking whacked out. You like it. Um, when I first started on uh, YouTube, I was just doing whacked out videos, and I just every video was different. It made no goddamn sense, and I was like, "Well, you'll never get, I'll never get popular like, any popula- popularity off this shit." People don't know what to expect. One minute I'm talking about normal things, and the next minute I'm like, you know, dressed up as a girl running around or whatever. And then I think it was well, like, you did something good. You have a target audience now, which is wrestling. So that's that's a good direction. Oh. Well, now I've got a couple other channels where we do other shit. So it's like I've expanded because, like, I just got so sick of just the wrestling. I was like, let's go into the other shit. You know, the whole thing is, like, you know, the old shock jockey type of radio type of stuff is what we do. So, um, But, yeah, the wrestling is all right. But sometimes people are just like, I don't want to do wrestling, but I want you to do other shit. What's um, the main What's the main channel or the main uh, podcast type thing? Well, it, it, right now it is it is the wrestling channel. But the main thing we're doing is Corrupted Podcast, which is every week for two hours on Patreon. Yeah. So that's been good. You know, we built up 300 patrons off that, and we play other stuff on the Corrupted YouTube channel. And my other YouTube channel got deleted a few years back, which had 30,000. And this one's at, like, 55 or something. Very slow growing, you know what I mean? Very humble little channel, six years. But the fact that I was able to, you know, when I got laid off from my job, keep doing this and now do it full-time based off of donations and Patreon and the support is pretty freaking crazy. Uh, from my size channel. You know, I mean, there's guys with like 500,000 subs who are like, you know, they can't, they're not doing this well at all. It's kind of a crazy rabid fan base. But, um, <laughs> yay, I patted myself on the back now. Um, so, <laughs> let me ask I you know, about... that's that's great. I, I've, I've uh, Patreon featured that stuff before. Like, they're saying, look at how small this person's channel is and look how successful they got. And so, I, it is pretty impressive. And... <laughs> I just I I'm, I'm laughing because I just saw this uh, Onision turns into an angry cookie monster video on your channel. <laughs> oh yeah, dude! I put that up a couple weeks back because I was laughing my ass off, dude. Because you were like, you were like, I'm not gonna be sad or, and you went to say mad, but or sad or angry. Uh, you went to say mad, and then you said angry. You were like sad or m- angry, like and like, dude. Yeah. I just fucking lost it. I was like, that is the funniest shit. I played that on the podcast, and people were roaring. I I can't I can't help but think that a lot of what I do is a product of how I was raised and what what influenced me, which is, you know, uh, numerous video games and, and professional wrestling. <laughs> it's just because I, I, I look at how I behave, and it's like, dude, sometimes you're kind of just acting like, you know, old school, friggin' uh, as if a uh, uh, shitty 1990s camera's on you and you're talking to a bunch of, like, fucking 12-year-olds or something like well, uh, I I'm the 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 rock smasher and blah. like it's just ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> well, plus but you just whatever. you just sometimes you like you, people want to play bad guy, good guy. You know, someone says some shit about you that's not true, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna go in. I'm maybe like, let's go. Maybe you know? wrestling, maybe wrestling messed me up. Where I was watching that so much that it it like told me that's how people act, and maybe I started <laughs> acting that way. Like those characters became part of my personality or something. Fuck, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's really scary what, what can happen to you as a kid and how that can form your whole future. Dude, I'm sure it's ingrained in us. Um, let me let me ask you about another guy who I used to like, and I just fucking I think he's a piece of shit now. But um, you worked with him. <laughs> you, you worked okay. with him. Uh, his name is Richie. Uh, Social repos, dude. This fucking. Oh right, right, right. This guy, he yeah. seemed like wicked cool. Like I liked his music a little bit, and that's why I started following him at first. And I was like, wow, he seems really cool. And then he got in, like, a beef with you, and then his girlfriend had something to do with you, and I wasn't too keen on the whole situation, but, you know, I didn't really take any side. I just saw that you guys had a falling out. I've had a million falling outs myself, so whatever. But after what he did, what he did to his other girlfriend, and then he started, uh, he got together with Jacqueline Glenn, and then then he literally did the exact thing that he <laughs> that he did to the other girl that that he made a video about doing, that you also warned her about him doing. And I just, I thought that situation was fucking crazy, and I have no idea how he still has as many fans as he does on his channel after what he did. 
Yeah. Well, here's what here's what's fucked up. What I did, I I I made the mistake of uh, uh, t- saying my my opinion about people that people like. You know, right. like I there's a lot of people who will go after individuals that everybody already hates, so they're more liked by association. Yeah. But I would just go after people that I fucking hated. Like I didn't really <laughs> think about Does society hate these people. So I'd go after you know whoever the fuck I felt like, and that is what made a lot of people just naturally hate me. So, you know, I do this, this, and this with numerous other people having mm-hmm. problems with them. And then I have beef with social repose. And so when I have beef with social repose, people are like, oh, social repose is probably great. And he's just try- probably trying to start shit with another person. And it's like, no, guys, I- I'm just literally going off what I'm experiencing in real life. And, you know, I, I- it's not that I ever was-, was saying anything bullshit in the past as far as, you know, my genuine experiences with people. It's just that in their own minds, people started to view me as this boy who cried wolf. Yeah, and it's like because because I was like you know talking about this person shitty, this person shitty, this person shitty. Those people are all still shitty in my opinion, unless yeah. I've said otherwise. You know, I'm like ah, oh, you know, actually we came to an understanding, blah blah blah. No, uh, so with social repose, you know, I was saying these warnings, and people were just like, "What? Well, you're the dramatic guy. You're the guy who like breaks up with every single fucker who comes your way, and and can't handle the friend for you know more than you know however long. So why would we trust you when you literally you know split ways with all these other people? My logic, my counter point is you know well it's not like you know i'm this person who repeatedly gets dumped for you know fucking whatever social repose does or whatever because so, social repose is a, a repeat getting dumped type person not a dumper and that typically indicates that there's a problem with you not a problem with them because right. otherwise it's, it's not like people dump you because you're too good for them or anything <laughs> it's, 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 that's just what it is so i thought it was amazing i mean i totally understand why people didn't didn't like you know listen to me i get it uh because you know they just viewed me as a problematic person because of how many problems i had with so many people but uh that that kind of is why you know so many people were where they were and when you know it came out that social repose was doing what it was doing People weren't happy to see me gloating about it because I was already established as this guy who fucking hates all the people that these other people love. And that's a problem. Right. So, like, that's that's part of the reason why I'm like, hey, I don't want to engage in so much drama anymore because I'm realizing that, yeah, I may have problems with somebody, but that doesn't have to be communicated to the entire world uh, uh, well, just because it's, it doesn't benefit my family, doesn't benefit me, doesn't benefit really my audience because it also makes no difference to a lot of these people. Um, they're still going to watch who they're watching and... Uh, it did, I don't know. Someone like kind of indicated. Someone indicated that I destroyed their childhood what? by having having beef with uh, certain YouTubers, and it's just what? like, well, I'm sorry about that, but this is how I genuinely well, feel. Wow, you would really do that. You would really do that. It, it's funny because it, it goes into the wrestling thing. You become a heel without you turn yourself into a heel by just trying to be honest. And I think because like I yeah. work, I work a little bit differently than than you do. Like I think you're more like you're m- much more direct, trying to be as honest as pop- possible up front. I'll I mean I don't know what else you do, but I play I play games a little bit where like I if I see somebody I know is a piece of garbage, and sometimes you know like they'll go over to my friend's channel or my co-host channel or somebody's channel and they'll be in there and I'll be like dude, this guy's a bad dude. He did this and that and this and that, you know, and the next thing you know, you I have people on me like, leave him alone, dude. Like, you don't know. Or like, and, you know, and then all of a sudden you turn yourself into the bad guy and it's almost better to just say like, Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you what he did to me. So just keep an eye out, whatever, you know, beyond. Yeah, that. totally. I t- I'm totally on board with you on that one. I was actually just thinking of that. Like you don't make it an issue. You just make sure that it's known what your stance is. So you just say, Hey, yeah. well, you know, I had this disagreement. But let's move on to the next thing. You know, like, yeah, so yeah. down the line, you play that clip and go, ha, ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I was honest, okay? I just didn't make it a whole thing. Well, you might, you so might where make people them... got uncomfortable. Well, the next so, time, yeah. too, they might just believe you a little bit more. You know, you, you're building more credibility with yourself. Yeah. Like, like, like Jacqueline Glenn, like, I know you came on hard with her about, like, hey, this guy's a piece of shit, you know, and she's like, I'm not having it. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I'm following my heart. But yeah, next time maybe when somebody that she finds credible, you know, gives her advice, she might think about it a little more. And you know, that's not her fault. That's that. Yeah, I, th- I think she's on a great path now. That's I, cool. I, I, like just from watching her video, I think that she's uh, she's got a lot of it figured out, and she's not going to let the next dude, you know, just fucking take her, sweep her off her feet like she did before. Let's talk about one more villain, and then we'll move on from that real quick. Um, oh God, this this person, like I've I've Jesus, that I have a war with this person. Literally weeks before you I got involved with her. Was this? Um, I don't know if she's on YouTube anymore. Or what happened after this? I moved on from it. But oh God! Sparkle Spice. You remember? Do you say Sparkle Spice? Is that what? I'm sorry. Did I say Sparkle Spice? What was her name? Uh, Spice Sparkle something. I don't know. 
That's good. I don't care. Let's I call think, her Sparkle Spice. Who cares? I can't. I can't even actually bring myself to say her name a lot. I mean, I could. I just don't want to. I, yeah. I actually have been referring to her as Voldemort for the longest time. <laughs> I was just say Voldemort. Dude, we know who she is. I now. was watching her video on like you and a couple other things in front of my wife, and you know. You know, a lot of people don't know what to make of you. So my wife doesn't. I've actually, I've actually never seen a single one of her videos. Now that I know of. Oh really? Actually, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I made a reaction video a long time ago. I, ma- I make thousands of videos like uh, every year and a half or so. But <laughs> so it's hard to keep up. But uh, no, I, I think the only time I've ever seen a video is when I reacted to one. So I have, I have an idea of who she is uh, that isn't based on a lot of experience outside. You know, a, a debate that we did or whatever. And uh, a reaction video, but yeah. she's charged, man. She had like she was like off her meds or something. She was just rattling shit off on you. She made a million videos about you. It, it was... came out though. I mean, eventually people figured it out because I was saying yeah. for a long time, I was like, guys, this chick's kind of crazy. Like, I don't know if you know this, but this chick's kind of nuts. And they're like, nah, you're just a dick. And I hate yeah. you. And she's right. And then eventually she st- she like referred to people of darker skin as poo babies or something in a live stream. Oh. And that's- that's when people started being like, oh, maybe she, maybe she is crazy. I'm like, yeah, well, if you just look yeah. at the behavior, nobody makes over 100 videos about someone unless they're nuts, you know, that they Dude, hate. It's crazy. She was all about that. She would like, the funniest thing is she would probably go after people who said stuff like that. And then she herself said some joke and then yeah, people, it turned well, on her and it was like, oh. That's a sad thing about humanity. Like, uh, I, I myself have had a, had a, a passive, what is it, going after... I did something I, where I was like, for the longest time, oh, yeah, I, was, I was used to be transphobic. I used to say transphobic shit a long time yeah. ago. I'd say stuff that was just, like, weird. Like, I uh, on Patreon, I put this video. I, the video itself was fine, uh, but the title was so messed up. <laughs> I was like, dude, why did you call it that? Because I, I called the video testing out tranny boobies. And I was <laughs> like, you can't say that. You can't call your video tranny boobies. Because the word tranny is like really, really upsetting to a lot of people. Oh, and like man. when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, See, I, I would be making a video. Like if somebody I hated made that video, oh, I'd be like, God. oh, they're transphobic, blah, whatever. See, I would do that. I don't but, even care. Like I, I, I love, I have no problem with transphobic people. I think even, they're, they're cool, uh, but. even so, I'm just like, I, that's an example of how, you know, we change over time and we kind of realize how messed up we used to be or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm still fucked. So long as you're not actively, like, you don't go, this person's transphobic for this, and then pop out a video that's extra transphobic just the same. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's one of the, like, with me, because I've been I've accused of all kinds of shit, because I say fucking, I say some fucked up stuff. And a couple years ago, like, I did something that was bad, and, you know, that got, got out of, taken out of context, the first part of the joke, and it looked really bad, and... I don't know, man. It was it was really screwed up, and it's and if that came out nowadays, like I don't know what would happen. But you know, what I mean, like, <laughs> but but like I tried to explain to people then, like only a few people were mad, and then everybody else was cool. But I tried to explain to people, like I don't care what you say, like I love everybody, and I don't, and I, you know what I mean. If somebody's really offended, I apo- I kind of apologize, but I'm not apologizing because I'm. Uh, I'm trying to be it's trying it's supposed to be funny and if you get the context you get it and if you turn it into something different that's your fault and I don't know man I don't know what else to say but so I, I'm careful about going after people for that stuff but you know if they have a clear track record or an agenda of doing it like I'm gonna go after transphobic people well that's fucked up you know you're whatever the fuck is wrong with you but and you know if it does bother <laughs> people then it's like well you know I was insensitive but that's kind of my deal um so yeah, the, the Jacqueline Glenn, the, even my wife, she was like, "I don't think you're gonna get. I don't think Onision would like you. You're kind of fucking. Doesn't he like, you know?" And I'm like, "No." no That's, that was something really funny. Is I, I went on the Drunken Peasants, and I just I made everybody in the room kind of feel awkward about, you know, the last eight years or whatever. Because <laughs> like freaking the Amazing Atheist sitting across from me, and they keep talking about how much like he's surprised and how much he likes me or whatever. I just thought it was so funny because it's like, is it interesting when we remove the cameras and we sit across from each other? And now we're like fucking bonding and everything's chill. And like how 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 many years we just went in each other's throats like for the longest time he's like, Oh, Nisian just wants drum, everything he does is fake and whatever yeah. and then we're sitting across from each other and it's like there's this one incident where he was saying, um, that I was I was just creating drama because I wanted to go on uh see there's a security card from the old uh, Jerry Springer show and uh he started his own show. And he wanted us to be on his show. And I'm like, well, fuck, that would be fucking hilarious if we were on his show. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, hey, I got real beef with uh, Amazing Atheist. He's the first guy I ever had a real problem with. Um, let's, I, so I DM'd him. I said, hey, you know, let's talk our issues out on this show. 
and he he went to to uh, another drama guy and uh, basically made a statement about how, you know, I'm so fake for going to him about fake drama. And I'm like, dude, if we had fake drama, you wouldn't be making a drama video about me going to you, ask you to come on a show about the <laughs> thing that you're talking about. Like, if we had no drama, you'd be like, oh, I actually like you, and there's no drama between us. That would have been fake. Right. Man. But no, you responded. <laughs> I just thought it was so ironic and so funny that I wound up that way. But no, like, when you get into across from somebody, I don't know. A lot of times, everybody seems really chill, and I'm like, with you, I don't, I don't know why we would butt heads. Pretty yeah. much, I can, get pretty much, I can get along with pretty much anybody who's into it. Uh, wrestling in general, and I don't know. Well, see, I didn't even know you liked wrestling. I was like, well, he's going to be like, what if he's going to, I go, Onision's going to look at my channel and be like, a fucking wrestling guy? What the hell is this? No, no, I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm a dumbass. I'm into wrestling. That's so funny, man. <laughs> it's, it's hard to watch now, I'll tell you that, but covering it every week now is like, ugh. I, I, actually, I actually split from wrestling, uh, watching it heavily right around, this, right around the time CM Punk left initially. <laughs> Now tell us to me all of you. I, I was like, I didn't come back. <laughs> hey, you're not the only one. They got 2.8 average million, 2.8 million people watching. There's people. There's there's empty seats in the arenas on Raw. Oh um, no, dude, it's yeah. weird. It's 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 weird. But they're making a ton of money. They just did something um, recently that was controversial. They went to uh, they 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 went to Saudi Arabia. And they had to leave. They're doing this whole women's movement and the women wrestling, and it's real. And we're, no, no divas anymore. No treating them like whores and stuff. And they left. Uh -huh. They left all the women home because they couldn't bring the women to Saudi Arabia. And for the first time ever, the Saudi Arabian uh, government or whatever, they allowed women to come into the event though to watch the event. The husbands gave them permission. So they gave oh, the so if WWE makes about two maybe makes like a $500,000 if they do a pay-per-view right they take $500,000 in maybe a million bucks maybe less but at Saudi Arabia they were given 200 million dollars to go over there just to perform for the prince and everybody and whatever the fuck so I mean how could you not <laughs> that's I mean that's the thing is like how could you not do it but people were like man you guys are hypocrites you know you're all about the women's movement and stuff and then you went to a country that you know, does what they do to women, but well, the the way you fight that is you say, hey, we donated like you know a quarter of it to women's charities. So fuck you. <laughs> you know what they? Like... You know what they did do though? They they paid the women. They paid all yeah. the women that didn't there come. You, so. There you go. So yeah, but you know what too is the I think the country is trying to change and grow or whatever. So they're like, yeah, they're they're learning and they're growing and women can drive now maybe with their permission. So I don't know, man. It's going in a positive uh, direction, I think, if you can over there. But people were pissed. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, well, you know, we've got a couple more real quick for you and I'll wrap it up. I'm sure you're busy as shit. I, I know I am. And if I'm busy, you must be really busy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who is, uh, who's your biggest supporter right now on YouTube? Do you have anybody that's like, like that guy really looks out for me now. I'm cool with that. I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean? Like, who's like, do you have anybody on YouTube now that's just like, you know, you're cool with? It's like, you know, the supporter of you or like, you know, tells everybody, hey, Onision's a good guy. I like him. Check out Onision, you know, that you're friends with right now that's back in your uh, you I have, I, I think I have one consistent friend on YouTube, and that's the guy who runs uh, YouTube.com slash TV. That's okay. uh, Tony V is the, is the, as a real world friend. That's like cool. not like not like a, every time I see him, we got to make a video together. But like literally, like oh hey, come hang out and we'll talk and we'll reflect on life and be all fucking existential crisis together and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Who's your biggest critic right now? I don't know. It might be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Every every other day, I, I like this is yeah you are this one dude. He's like it was so funny. I love seeing this stuff happen. There's this dude who was like. Uh, Onision's apology to Jacqueline was fake and you shouldn't trust him and he's a snake and all this stuff and then Jacqueline's like I think his apology was real and I just laughed because I was like ah, ha, ha. and so Jacqueline thought, thought it was real and it was real and so then I make my reaction be to Jacqueline or accepting my apology and I was just like so happy about that but like those sequential videos like if you look at all of them it's like it's fucking obvious that everything's like honest and straightforward and I just I think it's funny to see these guys and their narrative of me just fall apart I love yeah. it so much because it's like it's like it's so easy when like when you're consistent with with uh, how you experience things and, and, and how you tell the story and and how you uh, reflect on the world in general. When you're consistent with that and they're they're trying to find like little pieces missing or whatever you, you can if you've just been playing it forward. 
Like yeah. if, you've, if you've been telling exactly like it is. I'd say the biggest mistake uh, with that kind of thing that I've ever made is um, I uh, <laughs> ever saying that someone is right without knowing the full story. Like if you, if like for instance, if you if there's a video out there and uh, they're talking about you and you're okay with the first like five seconds of that video and you go, that video's right about me. Don't ever do that. I did that. I did that one time a long time ago where I just I I. Uh, I, I didn't look into everything, and yeah. so I validated something in its entirety when I didn't dive in all the way and actually understand what I was what I was agreeing with or whatever. But well, yeah, that, that's that's the only time I've ever had a hole in what I'm saying is when I approved of something that I didn't fully review, and I made such a fucking regret. But you, anyway, I, I mean, you know, you mean you're pretty confident about you know what you say and you believe you know you know what you're saying is you know true a lot of times, and other people are always playing games. It's hard to. Uh, uh, come to common ground on a lot of things sometimes. I've got uh, friends who are pretty strong opinions and pretty smart people. And, uh, you know, a lot of times with other people, they like to play make-believe. And it doesn't always – it's hard to argue with someone like that who's in that situation. Maybe, yeah, you have made done certain things that could be criticized, but people just go off the wall with your shit. Like your, um, that video when I made that reaction of you being like, you know, angry, you know, and you're pissed. Like people were saying you didn't sell your other car or whatever. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, you know, and people really criticize you for like, it's like, well, dude, you're rich and like all these things. And it's like, well, you know, with YouTube, you don't know tomorrow what's going to happen here with the way things have gone on YouTube. I mean, like my little example is I was working a full time 40 hour a week job and I went from $20 a day to finally hitting a hundred dollars a day in ad revenue. Right. And you know, a hundred dollars a day in ad revenue is a job for somebody. So it's a part time on top of my regular job, and then I got laid off, and then a month later the ad apocalypse shit happened. And I oh was like, Jesus! I'm like, dude, I don't have a job, and YouTube went from a hundred dollars a day to five dollars a day. I go, what the fuck do uh, I do? Jesus. I was about to, I was about to say, damn, you're making more money than me on YouTube. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I mean, like, this is this is the crazy thing. Uh, my spouse is getting, you know, we'll get like for every for every, you know, thousand views, they get like, uh, like two, three dollars, something like that. For me, every every thousand views, I get like, let me see, it was, okay, well, you're fully the thirty. Third, people, I get like thirty cents. Well, people need like to that. understand that you're fully demonetized, and not only are you de- demonetized. No, 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 I'm I'm not fully demonetized. Well, no, no, no fully, okay. I, I have I have some videos that are monetized, but I also have thousands of videos that are not monetized. So I have, uh, you know, I could I could pull in you know six million views on my combined channels or something like that, and I get paid pennies for it, and it's just like it's fucking nuts because it's like. YouTube keeps writing me saying, "Oh yeah, we we finally monetized this video that you appealed, you know, a year ago." Yeah, and it's it's like it's a little too little too late, but uh, it's it's just a needle in the haystack because there's so much more. There's like so there's literally thousands of videos just sitting there going, "Hey, will you approve me?" But they used to they used to be make, raking in money. It's really interesting transitioning uh, to all that, but I I don't know. I feel like I I don't think I would have uh, complained much about that. If I wasn't uh, getting a double whammy right now, because like people when the, with a the Tesla discussion, I said I said I used to have this, you know, I used to be living, I should say, in this big house, and I had these nice cars and stuff like that. And I was like, guys, I'm gonna lose my house and I'm gonna lose my cars. And they're like, uh, they're like, no, you're not. You're full of shit. You're so fucking rich. And then I, you know, I had to get rid of the cars and I'm getting rid well, of the house you, and all that stuff. And they're like, two? yeah, but now you own two houses. And I'm like, yeah, because you have to. I was getting a new house. So I could sell the other house, and the yeah. new house is worth half as much as the old house. Do you not know math? It's just—it was an interesting. Uh, but why? So I don't you, even know why. I'm how many will you have? Will you have two houses? One that's the stu- sort of like the studio, the YouTube thing, and then the other one's no. that's your personal house. No. Or, so you're gonna I, have one. I, well, say what? So no, I just have the one house, and the other house is getting sold. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. Now I—I I mean, like I've been trying to—I've been trying to buy a house for like eight years. So like we're maybe gonna do it this year in the next couple months. But like when I get hey. late. What it's was great. that? No, oh, it sucks over here. You're in, I mean, you're in an area where it's expensive too, but yeah, it's really expensive where you are. It's exp- it's really bad here. Like I got approved for one eighty, a hundred eighty thousand dollar house when I had my job, and um, they were like, <laughs> I was all the houses around here that are like that are breaking down, so they won't let you buy the house with FHA. You know, what I mean, they're like, no, you can't buy a house with a hole in the roof or. A, yeah, I see this. what you mean. Uh, no, when I first looked for my house, they approved me for like one thirty, I think. And so I got a house for one twenty seven, and it was a it was a fixer upper. But um, yeah, it had the ba- it had the it had the basics. Like you just gotta you gotta shop around because <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of duds. But it's amazing what they'll price the same. They'll price a total piece of crap, 
the same as a house that's totally livable. So you just got to keep looking. You'll, you'll, you'll probably find something. We're we're looking much better now than we were, which is weird because like it's YouTube only. But you have to have two uh, two years of you know you may may know this if you're looking, but you have to have self two years. self employment. Yeah. 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 And I fucked up my taxes bad last year. So, like, I was watching a lot of the shit that you were going through, and I was like, damn. I was like, I'm going through all the same shit, but on a way smaller level. So yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand the psych, the psychological sort of damage or stress that you're under. They, they see it as, like, you know, uh, years ago a guy made a video. I forget what his goddamn name is, Reaper or something, uh, Biblical Reaper. And he was, like, crying in the video. He had, like, piano music over it, and he was getting a new iPhone the next day, and he had all this equipment behind him. And people were like, you know, you're a scumbag or whatever. But, you know, in your videos, you weren't crying and shit, but you were just explaining what literally was going on. I think it was like therapy for you to be like, I want to tell you guys like what I'm dealing with. And I enjoyed it because I'm like, dude, this is like what I'm going through, but on a much, you know, much smaller scale. And it's weird because I get that people think like, oh, you know, well, you're rich, you know, but it's like you don't know, you know, if you mismanage things or you don't ask for help or tell people that you're going in a new direction or you're you're not growing yourself and explaining to your audience what's going on in two years, you could be just gone, and that would, you know that'd be stupid. So, well, what people don't understand is is uh, when you have less, you have less to lose, right. and when you have more, you could lose everything just the same. And so, when you're especially with you know taxes and stuff, they want more. The the, the government is foaming at the mouth or drooling when they look at you know your money, and so you. <laughs> When they come knocking and you didn't do taxes the way they they want, or they see a loophole where they can they can try to claim something, that's something that could ruin your whole life, like push you to bankruptcy, et cetera. So when they say, "Oh, you have money because you have a flat screen TV or something like that," it's like, yeah, that's that's money to you, but at the same time, that flat screen might have to get sold because the the bill is so high. Like for let's say you make twenty four thousand dollars a year, the IRS isn't going to come after you for more than maybe I don't know six thousand or something like that. But when you uh, when you spend a crap load of money on business or whatever, like you buy really expensive cameras or whatever, right. and so all that money's gone, let's say you make a million dollars in one year and you spend $600,000 of that on business or whatever, well, the, the government is going to be like, hey, you didn't file taxes right or something. If you didn't, if you were stupid enough to use TurboTax or something like that, they're going to be like, you didn't do it right, so we're coming after you. Well, all your money is gone in the business or whatever, and then you got all these assets that were depreciated or whatever. And now they want, you know, up to half of your money because uh, if you're self-employed, there's a tax for that. And they're also going to give you a 20 percent penalty and they're also going to try to bill you the original amount and di di completely disregard your deductions, et cetera. Right. So now they're wanting, you know, half a million dollars and you got 200 in your account or whatever, however much you have. I don't have 200. Nowhere near that. But <laughs> let's say you had 200. Uh, so now you're looking at, oh, my God, I'm going to lose everything. And then people are like, you're not poor, you got a flat screen. It's like, you don't understand at all <laughs> whatsoever about this situation. And on top of that, like, like uh, for instance, on Patreon, I think I'm making 3800 or something like that. And they're like, uh, you, you, you're fine, you're making this much a month. It's like, yeah, that would be fine if you didn't have the 20% self-employment tax, and you didn't have the 30% actual like income tax, and you didn't have the, uh, the fees from the previous years, and you didn't also have a pending $300,000 bill over your head. Right. You're not looking at the full picture whatsoever because of their own lack of experience and understanding with the government. And at the same time, you'll be criticized for your lack of understanding of the government in previous years. Right. So it seems really ironic to even move forward to you know, look at someone else's financial situation and act like you know everything. But yeah. yeah, no, about crying. I did cry at one point. Oh, cried okay. about losing losing my house and then I, you know, proceeded yeah. to lose that house or you know. It's a pretty emo house, it's a so. pretty goddamn emotional thing, you know, when you build yourself up a certain way and then that yeah, happens. So. Well, you also, you know, you, you got family and you, you, you your family gets used to that house and everybody's happy at that house, you know. But it's it's something this is one of those things where I become more grateful as time goes by and I stop complaining as much as time goes by because I realize that even though a lot of bad things happen um, so long as you, you try to continue to play your cards right and you get a better understanding of everything, it kind of works its way out a little bit in the sense that, you know, like this really hot girl you used to date, you thought she was the best, and then a better girl comes along, that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, yeah, the girl the girl who comes along later isn't quite as pretty as the one you used to be, but you're actually finding her more beautiful because she's better to you. And so you're kind of glad that you're with this new girl instead of the old girl. That's essentially what I'm going through right now. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Patreon's been huge, dude. I imagine there's no Patreon. Like, I don't know what the hell, like we would have done. Uh, if there's if there's no Patreon, um, shit. <laughs> I don't even know. 
I have no idea. Private website, oh, PayPal. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I, shit. I would be in serious. I would be in bigger trouble than I am. Yeah, for sure. Well, guys, uh, I'll let you know, we're gonna let Onision get out of here, man. Check out his channels. He's got a whole bunch of stuff. Check out his Patreon. Check out his <laughs> channels. Give him some support. And anything you want to plug? What anything? I want to plug? No, yeah, I'm yeah. fine. All right, he'll be all right. He's got a lot more views than me. Uh, guys, thanks <laughs> guys, for listening. And uh, you never, you never know. You never know. You title it right, and you could get plenty of views. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I mean, I get sixty million if you add all. Like, I it's funny because I write sixty million views, and people are like, "You don't have sixty million. You have like twenty five million or thirty million. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm counting all my channels that I ever had that got deleted. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, of course. Like, if you it. ever delete a video, it'll subtract from that. Just so you know. Oh, multiple three, a uh, couple two million videos go away. So I was pissed. I yeah. actually took uh, one down because right. this Asian company claimed it, and they had no right to claim it whatsoever, and they wouldn't fix it. And I went, well, fuck them, and I deleted the video. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go, guys.